Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about operator overloading and creating custom operators with unique associativity and precedence behavior. Let's get started. Simply speaking, operator overloading allows you to change how existing operators interact with custom types in your code base. If we can leverage this language feature correctly, we can really improve the readability of our code. Let's say that we have this struct to represent money. Now imagine we're building an e-commerce application. We'd likely need a convenient way of adding up the prices of all of the items in our shopping cart. With operator overloading, instead of being able to only add numeric values together, we could extend the plus operator to support adding money objects together. In order to take advantage of this language feature, we just need to provide a custom implementation for the operator in our types implementation. With just a small addition, we can now write code like this, which will add up all of the money objects in our array and return a money object with all of the values combined together. You may have even used operator overloading without realizing it. If you've ever implemented the equatable protocol, it requires you to provide a custom implementation for the equals equals operator. Now, I hope you'll agree that in these examples, operator overloading has increased the code's readability and expressiveness. However, we should be careful not to overdo it. Whenever you're creating or overriding an operator, make sure its use is obvious and undisputed. Language features like this can often produce diminishing returns, as the more custom behavior we introduce, the harder it is for other developers to understand our code. When we're simply overloading an existing operator, we inherit all of the precedence and associativity behavior from its parent operator. But if we want to create our own operator, we'll have to specify a few things explicitly. Firstly, we'll need to specify the type of the operator, and we have three options to pick from. Prefix, which describes an operator that comes before the value it is meant to be used with, like the not operator. Uh, postfix, which describes an operator that comes after the value it is meant to be used with, so like the force unwrapping operator. And then you have infix, which describes an operator that comes in between the value it is meant to be used with. So in this case, your addition, multiplication, subtraction are all considered infix operators. All right, now jumping over to the blog post for a moment, the next thing we'll need to specify for our custom operator is its precedence. And this tells the compiler the order in which to evaluate the expression. And operators belonging to a higher precedence group are always evaluated first. So if we look at this expression, and if we imagine that it had a custom operator that we created, we need to tell the compiler the order in which it should evaluate this expression. So if you remember from grade school, multiplication has a higher precedence than addition. That's why this portion of the expression is evaluated first. Now, this is a current Swift 5 precedence groups, and these go from the highest to the lowest level of precedence. And this is the full list of precedence options available to us in Swift. All right, the final thing we need to do before we create our custom operator is to specify its associativity. And this simply tells the compiler how operators of the same precedence level are grouped in the absence of parentheses. So what does this mean? If we look at this expression, we can see that we can put parentheses in one of two ways. And depending on how we process this expression, our answer can change dramatically. So to resolve this ambiguity, we simply specify if our property is left associative, right associative, or neither. And what this really means is if something is left associative, it means that we evaluate the expression from left to right, adding parentheses as we go. And conversely, right associative means that we evaluate the expression from right to left, adding the relevant parentheses as we, as we go. Now, if you want to take a deeper dive into this topic, the blog post is linked in the description below. All right, with all of the theory out of the way, let's go ahead and create a custom operator that will allow us to easily perform exponentiation. Now, exponentiation has a higher precedence than multiplication and is right associative. And this doesn't match any of Swift's existing precedence groups options, so we'll need to create our own. So this is a template you can use for creating a new precedence group for your custom operator. So let's go ahead and fill this out for exponentiation. So it would look something like this. It's gonna have a higher precedence in multiplication 
and we specify the associativity right here. Next, we need to let the compiler know about the existence of our custom operator, and we need to specify its behavior. So let's go ahead and declare our operator, and this needs to be at file scope. So both de the declaration of the precedence group, the operator, and the function definition need to be outside of any enclosing type. So we've gone ahead and we've specified that our new operator is going to be this. It's going to be of the infix variety, meaning it's going to be between the values that it's operating with. And we've defined a custom implementation for the operator. Now, anywhere else in our code, we are free to start writing expressions like this. And this, assuming that Swift had a power function, this would, this would be totally valid Swift code and it would compile without issue. If you're interested in taking a deeper dive and learning about some of the best practices and limitations of operator overloading, I suggest you check out the blog post linked below. And as a final point, operator overloading can be super useful, but you want to make sure you're not sacrificing your code's legibility when you use it. Custom operators, type alias, and all other forms of syntactic sugar can improve your code's clarity and your development speed, uh, but as long as you use it with a little bit of restraint and pragmatism. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.